Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today I'm going to be talking about Dungeons and & Dragons, and specifically I'm going to be talking about the new Guilds of Ravnica book, and the problem that the Guilds of Ravnica setting in Dungeons & Dragons creates specific for, specifically for but Magic the Gathering players who come over to try Dungeons & Dragons, alright? There's a huge problem here for those players. So if you are a Magic the Gathering player, and you're at the FLGS, and you're at Friday Night Magic, and you're playing with your modern deck, okay, and that you've created, and you are a skilled veteran Magic the Gathering player, right? And then you walk over into one of their parts of the store, and you see, oh my gosh, what's this? This is a big, you know, uh, a big book filled with Magic the Gathering stuff, right? But wait, it also says Dungeons and Dragons on this cover. What is this, right? So this person talks to their friend, and their friend says, oh, this is Dungeons and Dragons, and now your Magic the Gathering setting is one of our settings in Dungeons and Dragons. So if that Magic the Gathering player says, oh, well, I'd love to try it. Uh, you know, I love Magic the Gathering, and if they mix that with Dungeons and Dragons, it's got to be good, right? And then the, the, the Game Master, who's just a Dungeons & Dragons player and has never played Magic the Gathering, right, says, well, we're going to see. I will buy the book, I'll read the book, and I will run it for you as a game, okay? Here's what's going to happen, this is my prediction, with the vast majority of Magic the Gathering players. There's going to be a scale problem. There is a scale problem for Magic the Gathering players, okay? All right, so here's what happens, Okay. Uh, the problem is the scale and what people are used to. And I'm going to use an analogy to explain this, all right? So, uh, where I live, there is a pet shop. And that pet shop has three types of organic beings in it every single day, okay? It has dogs that get walked, okay? It, the place specializes in dogs. Uh, it has dog walkers, and it has the store owner, okay? Okay. Now, let's say you take that situation there and you make it into a tabletop role-playing game, which is not that crazy. There's tabletop role-playing games for almost every single situation on the earth. There's just tons of them. There's literally over a thousand tabletop role-playing games, okay? So, you have uh, Pet Shop, the tabletop role-playing game, okay? And uh, so, you bring all your players to the to the table and you say, okay, you, you, uh, you're going to play a, a dog or you're going to play a dog walker. And you start, you know, and, and you have the players start making the um, their character sheet, you know, and they're like, oh, well, I'm going to be a dachshund, and, and the things that I'm going to do is walk around the parks and uh, and also sniff things. That's, that's my, those are my primary activities. Or, uh, I'm going to be a dog walker, and I, I walk eight dogs, and uh, I have to be polite to the dog owners so that I get a big tip, right? And, that, and, and I also have to make the dogs happy. Uh, those are the things I do, right? But then, in the book, right, or, you know, basically... Somebody says, well, wait, 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 what about the, you know, what about the store owner, right? He's, he, why can't I play the store owner, right? Because then I would be able to tell the dog walkers what to do. I would be able to walk whatever dog I wanted to walk. And then I could, I could, you know, put together my own little group of dogs that, you know, all have the highest paying, you know, uh, the highest tipping people. And I could, I can make the sweater orders. And there's, I want to be the, the store owner because, there's more control. I control the dogs and I control the the dog walkers, right? Like it, there's just more to do and it's I'm I'd be more powerful. That's the scale issue that you're going to run into with Magic the Gathering players. When you bring a Magic the Gathering player to Dungeons and Dragons and you say, "Oh, you're going to play a Vidalkin, right? Or you're going to play a Centaur. You're going to play a cent a, a Centaur wizard, right?" Like a cent and 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 the Magic the Gathering players Oh, sure, I'll play a, a, a Centaur Wizard. Uh, what else am I going to play? I'm going to get to play a Simic Hybrid, uh, you know, um, Barbarian as well, right? And I'm going to be able to play a, uh, uh, a Minotaur Fighter, right? I get to play all three, right? And, and, and the Dungeon Master can go, no, 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 no. You just play one, one, one character, right? One Minotaur Fighter. That's all you play. And the Magic Gathering is going to play, like, what? what? I get to play one Minotaur... Uh, one Minotaur fighter. Well, when I when I'm over there at that other table, right? I and I I'm a planeswalker, man. I cast a Minotaur uh, fighter, and then I tell him to go fight, the, you know, my opponent. And then I also cast a Centaur wizard, and I also cast a Shivan dragon, and I control all of them. So you're telling me that I'm just going to play a Minotaur fighter? That's nonsense, man. Like, like. 
I'm a four wheel one race car driver and you're handing me a bicycle. There's a scale problem here. That is the scale problem with Magic the Gathering players being brought to Dungeons and Dragons. The scale is so small and so like rinky dink compared to the power they already wield as planeswalkers that it's a very serious concern, right? Because they're gonna, and, and, and I, I can hear you already. Well, Scott, this is what happened in 1974 when you stopped controlling all the war, you know, all the soldiers in your war games and you just role played one character, right? Well, this isn't new. This is in 1974, right? Like that was new in 1974. It was mind blowing and innovative. Now, with a million video games and with, you know, movies and all these kind of things, Mad, you know, Magic the Gathering players are used to power. And this is a massive reduction of power and options and choices for most Magic the Gathering players, right? And so, but then what it prompts, get this, it prompts something very interesting, right? So do we go, oh, well, you know, do we let what's probably going to happen, in my opinion, happen? And Magic the Gathering goes, this is ridiculous. I'm not going to, you know, play just one Minotaur fighter. Are you kidding? A Minotaur fighter? I cast that in Magic Gathering, gets lightning bolted. It doesn't even live for 30 seconds, right? Like, this is, you know, this is any, you know, this is a genie being put into a bottle, man. Like, you can't bring me over to this game and, and tell me this is what you want me to do. This is ridiculous, right? Uh, Magic the Gathering player is just not going to see the scope as refreshing or new or anything, right? In my opinion, right? Now, do you let that happen, do you let that situation happen the way it normally would happen, right? And the Magic the Gathering, couple of the Magic Gathering, that, that Magic the Gathering player, and this will happen across every FLGS across the United States, in my opinion, right? Uh, say, oh, that's, you know, thanks for thanks for putting that together, Sally. I appreciate you dungeon mastering. Your game's crap. Bye. <laughs> like, right? <laughs> like, you know, and, and just say, no, I am not, I'm not interested in that tiny, tiny sliver of the game I'm already playing, right? Or do you let it flip? Right? Do you make Dungeons and Dragons players into planeswalkers, right? And expand the breadth of options and choices and abilities for Dungeons and Dragons players. And now a Dungeons and Dragons player doesn't make one character, they make six characters. And they have a folio of characters. And then this solves the problem of oh, my character just died. Oh, well, I got another character in the folio. Uh, and you could switch them out between scenes. And you could do all... And, and, and so each player at the table has a folio of four, you know, four six, eight different characters uh, that they're playing at all times. And and the now the power of the Dungeons & Dragons player matches the Planeswalker at the Magic Gathering table, right? So that is one possibility that you can bring out. And that's one of the things is, I truly believe the Guilds of Ravnica book exists because of a corporate commercial decision. But that doesn't mean it needs to be bad. It could really do some cool things. And I have to say as a player, when I am at when I, I am in the player seat in Dungeons & Dragons, I often feel incredibly constrained by playing one player. I would love the option to be a Planeswalker and to have be able to have a Minotaur fighter and a Vidalcan Barbarian and a Simic Wizard, you know, and, uh, you know, and a Luxodon Cleric. I, I, I'm more than capable of playing four characters at, at the table, switching them out from scene to scene and, and using whatever is needed. I'm more than capable of that. And the vast majority of Dungeons & Dragons players are more than capable of that, right? And so, so do we let, do we try to shove the Magic Gathering players taking their genie powers and shove them into the bottle or do we take the Dungeons and Dragons players and and promote them to the power of a planeswalker? I think it might be time to promote the the Dungeons and Dragons players to the power of a planeswalker. That's my thought. Let me know what you think, and uh, please consider liking and subscribing.